How's it going, guys? So this is a difficult question for family medicine. Uh, some of you will see this and say, no, Michael, fuck you. It's easy. It's not an easy question, okay? Difficult. So before we get started, I will be an asshole like I usually am. Tell you to subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L, M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Recently created a Telegram group and channel. Links are down below. Now let's start the fucking questions. So 55-year-old dude, four-month history, worsening shortness of breath, five-year history of COPD, and he's been smoking for 40 years, but quit three years ago. This is important because smoking cessation is obviously the first thing we do when addressing COPD. His ABGs, pH is normal, 7.40, should be 7.35 to 7.45. PCO2 upper end and normal at 43 millimeters of mercury, should be 33 to 44. Uh, normally, uh, patients with COPD are chronic CO2 retainers, so we could have a chronic respiratory acidosis here with a high bicarb, a high CO2, acute exacerbation of COPD. We'd have a super fucking high CO2. But the point is, we look at these values and we say, not not that bad, right? This, this isn't terrible. Uh, PO2 is 75. It's low. should be 80 to 100 millimeters of mercury, as close to 100 as possible. So we're just going to look at the answer choices here. Questions asking the most appropriate next step of management. So choice A, bosentin, wrong fucking answer. This is an endothelin one receptor antagonist that's super fucking high yield on step one exams. You need to know this is used for pulmonary hypertension, but not generally related to COPD. Usually for primary pulmonary hypertension due to BMPR2 mutation, generally a woman 20s to 30s who's a non-smoker who has a loud P2 heart sound, pulmonic component of S2, that means pulmonary hypertension in US Millie, or has tricuspid regurge. I know that sounds really fucking weird, but tricuspid regurge is often caused by pulmonary hypertension. That's when we would use bosentin, okay? Endothelin 1 receptor antagonist. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Fluticasone, also wrong answer. This is an inhaled corticosteroid that does have a role in COPD and asthma, but it's not the first thing we use. I will explain the sequence in a moment. Relax, okay? Choice C, home oxygen therapy, wrong fucking answer. Now, this is where we get into the difficulty of the question. For 2CK, you should be aware of that we only advise or slash recommend home oxygen therapy if the patient's PO2 on room air is under 55 millimeters of mercury slash 88% saturation, or if under 60 millimeters of mercury slash 89% saturation, if the patient is core pulmonale, okay? So if there's right ventricular changes, edema, JVD, et cetera, uh, and we right bundle branch block, right, uh, right axis deviation on ECG, if we have core pulmonale ensuing uh, under 60 millimeters of mercury, 89% saturation. Otherwise, we don't give home oxygen unless under 50, 55 millimeters of mercury, 88% saturation. This guy is above that threshold, okay? It's 75. So home oxygen therapy, not recommended, difficult. And then what makes this even more difficult is that our correct answer is hypertropium, which is a weird slash unusual fucking answer. You say, really? That sounds like kind of, you know, strange. I agree, okay? But it's not my fucking opinion. This is on the NBMEs for 2CK, all right? Family medicine. So hypertropium is a muscarinic receptor antagonist. And your factoid, your sentence that I want you to memorize, is that the first line pharmacologic treatment for COPD is either a SABA, short acting uh, beta 2 agonist such as albuterol, or a SAMA, short acting muscarinic receptor antagonist such as hypertropium. And there's a question floating around the family med forms for 2CK where they give you home oxygen therapy, it's the wrong answer, and they have hypertropium and they don't list albuterol. So it sounds unusual. To just, to just choose hypertropium. Sounds unusual, but it's what they want, okay? And then after the patient's on albuterol or hypertropium, we can add fluticasone, okay? And then uh, we can also consider salmeterol, which is a long-acting beta-2 agonist. Uh, but hypertropium or albuterol, first line for uh, COPD. We do, we do not use hypertropium classically in asthma. Some students will say, oh, I've seen it used. It's not classically used for asthma and not on USMLE. Choice E, netochromial, wrong answer. This is a mast cell stabilizer. So chromal and sodium, netochromial. USM, uh, USMLE wants you to know that these drugs uh, inhibit the release of autocoids from mast cells. Sounds That sounds very weird, but it's not my opinion. Once again, it's on the NBME form. So an autocoid, uh, apparently the release of stored uh, histamine is referred to as an autocoid. Netochromial, chromal, and sodium mast cell stabilizers. These can be used in asthma, allergy-induced asthma. They're not first-line drugs. You simply just wants you to know the mechanism of action. You know the deal. I'm going to continue making more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.